Are we live? Well, Ed, we were just talking about the state of the states, and one of the things that uh, is concerns me is, you know, ever since California, there's been these price control bills, and they keep piling up on each other, and I don't want to see this trend happening, and uh, but I'm afraid it's happening. Once that, once that dam was breached, and the industry agreed to price controls of the type that exists in California, it's very hard thereafter to argue in another state, oh, we can't live with price controls because the response is, aren't you living with them in California? So it was no surprise to me, it will be no surprise to me that future amendments to rent to own statutes are gonna look a lot like California. They're gonna have price controls. Well, New York just passed it. What, what was your opinion on um, the New York statute? Well, I would rather it not have passed, but you may recollect that when that bill was enacted, there were seven rent-owned bills pending in the state. The, the move was afoot to increase the regulation of the rent-owned industry for reasons mysterious or political. And so something was going to happen there, and uh, something did happen. Something did happen. They borrowed heavily from California. They borrowed, California doesn't have the rules on used product. They borrowed uh, from West Virginia to get the rules on used product that resulted from a settlement of a lawsuit there. So it's fairly restrictive. Uh, I think dealers can survive. I think the margins, the, the prices are set high enough where dealers will survive, but I don't think that it's going to uh, allow the industry to grow there particularly, and it may give a leg up to the big dealers who are able to buy cheaper offer lower pricing uh, and I, I, I'm concerned that that it that it will have some anti-competitive impact in the state. You said there was a pendulum swinging you know for the last you know decade or so we the bullseye hasn't been as much on us as it, it, it has been but uh, you say that may not be the case coming forward in these years. We were under the white-hot glare of legislative scrutiny in the 80s, early 90s. Then payday loans came along. There, there was a moment when they didn't exist. And that, then, then suddenly they, they sprouted uh, and, and grew at a phenomenal pace and were really taking all the heat for us. So we were delighted that they were out there because consumer advocates thought that was a much more pernicious business than ours and aimed all of their efforts toward uh, getting rid of the payday loan business. And while that is still an active aspect of consumer protection activism in the country, just lately, the New York bill, the Vermont bill, the Illinois bill, the Indiana bill, I'm sensing some increased scrutiny of rent own simply because perhaps it's our turn again. Well, on a bigger level, uh, you talked about the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and then also, you know, small business has to worry about, or at least think about, health care reform. Uh, you know, the Republicans are in power in the House and they want to define both. I mean, how do you feel about, you know, the, the Bureau and health care? I don't like the Bureau and I don't like the health care bills. Either one, I'm a Republican. So I hope that the Republicans can defund both. I'm not optimistic that they can, and they certainly can't while Obama's still the president. He'll veto any such bills that get on his desk. And there's certainly not the votes to override a veto. So the only way that's going to happen is either to do some uh, legislative leisure demand with, with the budget and financing and, and just dry up funds to those two things, or to uh, have the president have a change of presidents in 2012. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, on the health care, now that it's, it's this year, it's going to be a lot more implemented. Uh, you know, how much is it going to affect these independents out here? I don't know yet. I don't, I don't know yet. Uh, I've, I've looked at it. Uh, that bill doesn't really have much of an impact o over companies that have fewer than 50 employees. And then it really kicks in with companies over 100 employees, as I understand it. But what, what, what I don't think any of us knows is what will it do to the 
medical system in the country. What's it going to do to doctors? What's it going to do to uh, hospitals? How are they going to react? Because if we have fewer doctors and we have hospital closures, then everybody's going to get less medical care, regardless of the cost. That's a concern of mine. But, but I don't know. I don't know simply because I haven't studied it in any detail what specific impact the the medical, the new medical law, Obamacare, is going to have on rent on dealers. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go, let's go back to the states, how, you know, you have to pay attention to the states. Uh, you mentioned in the seminar about uh, complaints, people officially complaining about your business. Uh, how do you deal with that? Well, you fix them. You fix them. You, you have unhappy customers, you make them happy. You do whatever that takes. And it, that's not really a problem in this industry. Historically, we've been very good at satisfying customers, and I think our statistics bear that out, that rent on customers like doing business with us and, and, and are satisfied with the relationship they have with the stores. The danger comes when customers complain to, to the government and the store doesn't know about the complaint, so it can't fix it. And that was the specific issue to which I was speaking this morning, encouraging dealers to contact state attorney general's offices and consumer protection offices local uh, or, or state or regional to make sure that they're not accumulating complaints they don't know about. What's the, uh, what's the worst way one could get sued as an independent? Where's the most vulnerable spot that me, Joe Rentone, could get sued? Well, these days there are a lot more, there are a lot more lawsuits filed by employees and former employees against rental companies than there are by customers, quite frankly. Just the, the nature of the uh, entitlement philosophy that pervades this country. People think the world owes them a living, and uh, if they get fired for not doing their job, they think the rental company did something wrong, not them. So we have hundreds, hundreds of uh, lawsuits brought by em employees and former employees who claim that the rental company done them wrong. Those lawsuits don't put you out of business. They just uh, take a lot of time, cost a lot of money, and are a lot of trouble fooling with because you got to accumulate records to disprove. You, you, the burden of proof ends on the rental company to disprove that they discriminated, and that it's it's a cumbersome process. The the the, the, the danger still the danger it, it's it's the same danger that's always existed, and that is that you get accused of being a disguised credit sale, because that that lends itself to class action litigation and potentially includes everybody you've done business with over the past three, five, seven years. And uh, if, if, if every one of those customers gets even a modest amount of money, it would put most companies out of business. They couldn't pay the, they couldn't pay the bill. Well, you mentioned a lot. You've been here 1981, 30 years later. What do you see? What do you see around here? What's the... What do you think has happened in 30 years? Well, it's gotten a lot bigger, and uh, we've gotten a lot better. We've gotten a lot better. The guys that are doing this, the, the, the early guys were in for the quick kill. They weren't sure whether rent own was legal or not, and they just thought, hey, I'm going to rent some TVs, and uh, I'm going to get out of town before they catch me. <laughs> and now guys are, you know, they're, it's an intergenerational business. They, uh, they wear coats and ties. They take management courses. I mean, they're, they're real business people. We, we made rent to own legitimate over the course of 30 years. And I'm glad we did, glad we did. We've been, uh, as we've evolved, we keep getting more uh, into the, the bigger picture with like Rent Direct nationwide and with APRO. How, how do you feel that impacts the, the individual? Well, the lines are blurring slowly but surely between retail and rent own. When you look at the kiosk idea that they talked about this morning where you're putting rental kiosks in, uh, in, in retail stores, you've got some, some uh, fledgling rent owned business on the internet, you, you, you've got really indistinguishable product mixes. We, in the rent owned business when we first got started, rent owned stores had their very own products. There were Rutherford TVs, for example, that didn't exist anywhere but in a rent owned store. Nowadays you walk into a rent owned store and you find the same products in those stores that you find, well, in this show, for example, uh, that you find in the major retailers in this country. 
so that's probably a good thing. It makes it harder to carve us out and legislatively, politically, and hurt us if we're sort of in the overall retail mix. So, you know, groups like Rent Direct and Wall Street, they pay more attention to rent to own these days, you know? How, they do. How do you feel about that? Suits me fine. I'm, I'm delighted that they're taking interest in us. We got some big companies, you know, Renner Center's a $3 billion company, I think. Aaron's $2 billion company, that's, that's big business, big business. All right, well, that brings up a good point. If I'm Joe rent to own is that a threat? Are they over, do they have, are they a gorilla that can, you know, knock me out? How do I handle that sort of well, power? Rent, the small rent to own guys are pretty light on their feet. They can move with the trends, uh, with population shifts. So they, they're, they're not my, they, I don't know that the big companies are mired in anything, but they just move more slowly. They plan out farther ahead. So I think the little guys, I mean, this is a, uh, this still is an intimate business. Customers uh, and employees know each other very, very well. I heard uh, Beamer say one time that the, on, the, the only relationship in the retail marketplace that was more intimate than rent-to-own store employees and their customers w was the senior citizens and their pharmacist who they're seeing every week. So we're... You make that friendship, you make that connection, you make that relationship, then the fact that the rental store down the street is offering that TV for a dollar a week less is not going to break that relationship. So no, I think the little guys still uh, can compete and are competing. I get a lot of calls asking, you know, how's rent to own faring in this economy, in these, these you know, troubled economic times? You deal with these business owners every day. Well, what are they saying to you? What do you think? Mixed. I mean, it, the, the, the drying up of consumer credit, which certainly has occurred over the last two years, helps this business. It helps certain individual companies and, and probably certain regions of the country more than it helps others. So I still got guys talking to me and whining about how bad the business is. But I got other guys who are uh, quietly uh, taking the money to the bank. Dancing in the streets, eh? Well, no, they don't want uh, people moving in next door, opening up more rent on stores, so they're being quiet about it, but I think they're doing fine. Okay. Well, it was funny because James at the session, James McAlpine at the session, mentioned that all three uh, kind of elements of the public companies and the independents uh, are showing a upward demographics. Uh, what do you... Well, that, I think that's due to the uh, drying up of consumer credit, that people who, who heretofore could have put it on a credit card, had the credit card limits lowered, had fewer credit cards, they were trying to pay down their debt, uh, and so they are coming to take a look at rent own. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. I'm hoping we're expanding the universe of rent own customers upward. That's what I hope. Well, I mean, we, you and I sat in a room and watched people talk about that in St. Louis. Um, you know, do you think uh, that is happening um, just out of the professionalism of, of rent-to-own as it evolves? What or? I learned from that was we got a ways to go. Mm -hmm. The people who hadn't been in a rent-to-own store don't know what goes on in one, they don't understand the transaction, and they think the merchandise is shoddy. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, market better, advertise more, and keep, keep working on it. I, I'm sure it's an eternal battle to get to get those customers to come take a look. Once they take a look, they like what they see, but it's it's tough getting them to take a look. Is that a different story 20 years ago? Or is it the same thing? It hadn't changed a lot. It hadn't changed a lot. I mean, more people know about Rento now than they did because we got more stores, we got more customers, but that that's just a, that's a perpetual battle. I, I think it'll never be over. We're gonna do four more out in the country. So what do you think? Is it gonna be the same story? We'll hear, we'll hear more or less the same thing. <laughs> we'll hear more or less the same thing. I, I'll be surprised if there are extraordinary differences regionally anymore because we got national advertisers. We got Renner Center advertising nationally. We got Aaron's advertising nationally. So I suspect that the, that the sense of rent to own 
is, is a national sense. We'll see, we'll see. Might vary by big market, little market. So, uh, Ed Wynn of 30 years here in the rental owned industry, I just want to thank you. Is there any last uh, pontification you want to give America out there? Well, these shows are really fun. If you hadn't been to one, uh, I go to CES. CES is hard to negotiate. And I mean, I love to look at what, what's new, cutting edge, but it's just so hard to get around when you got 150,000 people. A show like this, you see what's cutting edge, but it's easily navigable. And, uh, you know, I'm impressed. I'm always impressed when I come to one of these shows. Um, the, the technological advances that are out there for consumers, it's uh, very impressive. I agree, and that's because Rent Direct does a damn good job. And again, we thank Rent Direct, and, and we're we do, we do, we, we like them, and uh, it's a it's a well run, it's a well run group nationwide. And so, thank you, and we are going to sign off for the moment and go grab another victim uh, interview subject, and be back uh, shortly. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. <laughs>